This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. doing up here in the attic? Comet, it went up. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> Come, Nitch. Everything's 3D Hollywood today. I remember back when I was your age, we used to use the old TV set. No satellite hookups or anything. Just took our signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some were even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that enforced colorization law through in the 20s. Those shows must have been really boring. They weren't even interactive. Uh, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at this. Mm. Ooh, what? what's that? Oh, it's called ECR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the comm net, people used to tape shows. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation. <coughs> Come back with us to the 60s and 70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded and formed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Sminbar, along with Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley. We're here to talk about 60s and 70s television. Before we jump into the big extravaganza for tonight, uh, just want to tell you we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV Cable 21. Also, we have a new box number. Yes? We got kicked out of the old one, so here's our brand new box number. New if you want to box. If you want to write into us, we don't know why. Our box number is 15, 15 14, 14, 11, 11, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. That's 15, 14, 11, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. And remember, we have that big, uh, oh, we can never remember, I can never remember the name of this, our uh, swap meet thing about the, uh, the video. I don't think we did name it. Do we christen it or anything? <laughs> that, well, you could write in and tell us what we should call this thing. Where, if you've got a show that you really want to see that's not available on video, go and uh, write to us, say, hey, where is this? And we'll announce it on the air. And from the half dozen people who actually watch the show, maybe one of them actually have a tape, and we'll work out some sort of deal. So No uh, money. No money. This is nonprofit. It's just we'll, ha we'll get swapping. names exchanged. Exactly. It's a Video swinging. <laughs> Yeah. So. Fan mail from some flounders. <laughs> Which brings us into tonight's episode. It's on J. Ward cartoons. That's right. And it, for those of you who don't know who J. Ward is, that's, of course, things like uh, Boinkle and... Uh, and Rock. And Rocky <laughs> and the whole Rocky the Flying Squirrel and 
the whole uh, J Ward uh, universe. Universe, so exactly. Captain let's, Crunch. Oh yeah. So let's move right into that, Wilbert. Uh, what's your first point for the evening? Well, by golly, that Rocky and Bullwinkle, Rocky the Flying Squirrel, and Bullwinkle J Moose. Actually, I think it was Rocket. J Rocket, Squirrel. Rocket J Squirrel, yes. And Bullwinkle J Moose. Not that the J's really meant Many anything. Things. They were just there. Just I like think Michael was, J Fox. I think they were there because it's J Ward, so he just right. had his name in it. J. Michael, uh, Rocket J, J Squirrel. Squirrel. Bullwinkle J yeah. Moose. Anyway, okay. the, um, the first show premiered back in 1959, Rocky and His Friends. And we have Rocky and Bullwinkle, who are residents of Frostbite Falls. A lovely little place. And, um, you know, actually, this was, this was going to be... They, back when they first thought it up, it was it was a, a project called the Frostbite Fall Foss, let's try it. <laughs> the Frostbite Fall Reviews, and um, there were a group of animals that were running a television station in the North Woods, and among the characters were Oski Bear, the cameraman, Blackstone Crow, the fiery director, Sylvester Fox, the egotistical actor, and Flora Fauna, Fox's leading lady. And there were also two other characters, Rocky a Flying Squirrel and Bullwinkle the French-Canadian Moose. And actually, since the other characters, we never got to see them, it just became a Rocky and Bullwinkle show. <laughs> so Bullwinkle was of French-Canadian descent? Yeah. Didn't you ever notice he's, he's Canadian? I mean, he's a moose. <laughs> right. Well, they have moose at the zoo, Phil. They have moose and squirrel. <laughs> anyway, so... Um, in my backyard. The, big guy. the show came, well, it was premiered back in 59. <laughs> Not all Canadians say A. <laughs> okay. <laughs> although, although it certainly seems so. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know. I've never been to Canada. You said it. <laughs> okay, so we've got, we've got um, on the show, we've got um, Rocky and Bullwinkle. And, oh, and no! <laughs> oh, oh! We've got, um, they're, 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 um, they're the, the, the bad guys. No, the, the Rocky and Bullwinkle will be the protagonist. <laughs> and the antagonist would be... Boris Badenov and Natasha, Natasha Fatali. <laughs> yeah, well, I never knew she had a last name, but I there we are. they hardly ever mention They never do it. mention her for right. last name. And they're, they're, <laughs> they're fearless leader, fearless leader. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, <laughs> what about Mr. Big? <laughs> <laughs> I remember I was like, oh, it's Mr. Big. And, and Mr. Big was like this two-inch tall guy or something, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. <laughs> <laughs> and wasn't he? He was the boss of them all, but you right. saw him just a few times there. Yeah. Yeah, Smokey wasn't. Smokes, Mr. Pig! <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rock. <laughs> <laughs> and Boris and Natasha. And they just had these, these um, what, what, what should we say, um, pseudo-Soviet accents? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Cold, Cold War era Soviet exactly, accents. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It was 59, and right. then the, the show came back again in, um, well, 61, I believe it was, as... The Bullwinkle Show. Right. Mm -hmm. By that point, Rocky had pretty much been pushed, pushed out of the out of the uh, spotlight. <laughs> and it was because the enormous uh, comedic potential of Bullwinkle had been realized. Yes, exactly. And um, that one focused more on, on like their media attention, I guess. I, yeah, I think say. so. Because by then they were doing lots of um, ads. In fact, Cheerios was a big sponsor of the old, uh, mm -hmm. all the General Mills cereals. In fact, uh, if you were able to get some of the, and this is not the stuff that's out there in video right now, which is the official stuff, uh, some of the unofficial, I suppose, pirated stuff you might see at some mm -hmm. flea market or something. Uh, uh, not that we would ever go to those places. That's though. right. If you accidentally showed up at one of those places and you saw this, you would see things like a lot of commercials for General Mills mm -hmm. uh, uh, cereals thrown in uh, because they were big into that. Go with Cheerios. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Big G, little O. Okay, but also on the show we had um, such characters, such such now famous characters as, um, well, Peabody and Sherman. Who, had <laughs> who? Well, let's see what what was their segment actually called now? Um, the Mr. Peabody, Mr. Peabody show. <laughs> well, it's just called Mr. Peabody, okay. I believe. But anyway, Mr. Peabody. Hello out there, Peabody here, and my boy Sherman. <laughs> Mr. Peabody was a dog, and, and Sherman was his boy. boy. Mr. Peabody owned Sherman. Well, they, and, um, there was one cartoon where they explained, I, I'm trying to remember, the, the, like the origin story of why Peabody has a, a pet boy. <laughs> well, I think why it was not? just that he was, was walking just, down the street, and maybe it, Sherman followed him home and he, or something. Yeah, and he's like so incredibly intelligent that they decided that... Uh, 
It was like, I don't know, it's like, Sherman, I think, found Peabody and like tried to treat him like a dog and realized he was incredibly intelligent, in fact, smarter, a lot smarter than Sherman was, and so somehow the, uh, really they just reversed the roles. And, Gee, Mr. Peabody, you're so smart. <laughs> yeah, Sherman, now. <laughs> And Mr. Peabody has this machine called the Wayback, Wayback Machine, which is a time machine. And they would get in the Wayback Machine, they'd set the dials and just go way, way back in time. And um, they'd visit famous characters. And, and it was really... Sneaking a history lesson. Yeah, it was like, it was educational. I mean, it history wasn't... Inc got snuck it, on it. Yeah, it wasn't incredibly accurate, but I mean, right. it was... But I mean, you might know, Marco Polo, I mean, you learn names and general eras and generally what happened. Sort of. <laughs> exactly. sort of. So that you could go to school and say, oh, yeah, Mr. Peabody, Peabody and Sherman talked about them. Talked about that. <laughs> Which is, I guess, the same thing and kids are doing now. They're going to school. Oh, yeah, man, Socrates, uh, Bill and Ted, yeah. they talked about them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of a uh, 20 years ago, Bill and Ted, right. excellent adventure. Yeah, kind of. These, these, both of these two are smart. Whereas Bill and Ted are smart. Not Never. necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Actually, I guess uh, Mr. Peabody's smarter than all of them. But <laughs> well, there we are. Cool. <laughs> and we had um, other characters on there. Well, like, let's, take um, look, let's take a look at the board, shall we? So you can kind of, kind of give an idea of uh, as, as the. Because uh, the people at home, for <laughs> okay, well, for the kids at home, they uh, don't know what's going. <laughs> kids at home who missed all this. Well, we missed this see, wonderful. Now, there along the bottom, I guess you can see um, Peabody and Sherman. Right. Off to the well. By golly, the um, left or right. It's kind of difficult. Mind. Now, we're, if it would be on my right hand, but you at home, it would probably be on your. Um, <laughs> we'll send out your left hand. instruction books with your this. left hand side. <laughs> we've got. Um, Dudley do right. Okay, there's and the, over there, way over to the left. Flash with the lovely right. green complexion. Yes. Dudley. Yeah, there's okay, there's Snidely. Okay, right, right below. In, right in back of um, Dudley, we have Natasha. Yeah, it's and Natasha. Next to Natasha, we have Wrongway Peach Fuzz, who yes. is just a, a wonderful mixed-up sailor kind of character. Actually, uh, very similar to the uh, Wrongway. Trying to remember his name, character on uh, Gilligan's, Gilligan's Island. Island. Oh, what was his Wrongway Kerrigan? Hans Confried. Uh, Conrad. Conrad. Han, Han, yeah, <laughs> Hans guy. Confried. What was my name? Except he, he flew a plane, but he was always landing on the island. So he was like one of the only people that could find the island. Anyway. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Back to our show here. Down in the uh, the right hand corner, I suppose we've got um, there's Boris Badenov. Right, there's Boris. And then right uh, next to him, or up above him, I guess actually we have Aesop and Son. Which was yeah, that's uh, certainly one of the big things uh, was that and the Fraction Fairy Tales. Right, yeah. right. That, kinda... um, that also got into um, the literary aspect of the cartoon. It wasn't just fun. You actually learned names. You learned um, things. Right. So, and then next to them, we, well, kind of in back of them, over their shoulder, there's Nell, who was Dudley's <laughs> Nell. girlfriend. Nell! And his horse, horse. Right. And then over there on the other side of Aesop, there's Fearless Leader. Right. And then, of course, on top of the trash can, there is Bullwinkle, and in his hand is Rocket J. Squirrel, Squirrel there. Holding the What's the Matter You? Uh... <laughs> exactly. Bullwinkle's alma mater. Alma mater. What's the Matter You? <laughs> and then over there, they've got these two little green guys. Skidney and Cloyd, who were the moon mm -hmm. men that appeared on the... And um, brought the, that wonderful element, Upsidasium. Upsidasium, <laughs> the, uh, the anti-gravity uh, <laughs> element that they brought from the moon and just caused a whole big furor over that. I suppose Boris and Natasha were trying to get a hold of that, too. Oh, yeah. That and the mooseberry bush. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but now the Skidney and Cloyd here, they're interesting characters. In the fact that um, from them we have another offshoot of another J. Ward kind of thing that happened a few years later there, like toward the middle ends of the 60s, late 60s, early 70s, actually, I guess would be, when he was doing, um, well, he, he did some commercial products that spawned kind of commercial cartoons. Because right. there, um, there was Captain, Captain Crunch, Crunch. Crunch, the right. whole Captain Crunch thing. And then there were um, two characters who were kind of at odds with each other, Quisp, Quisp and, and Quake. Quake. Oh, yeah. Well, Quisp, Look very a, much a lot like similar. the Enormously moon like. men here. Oh yeah, he was more one crisp pink with a green suit. Though. Um, yes, he was. Head. But he was. It's the same kind of little yeah. puppy hair yeah. that comes out of there. He had the. <laughs> he had a green turtleneck. I think. Yeah. yeah. He had a little little belt with a Q on it. Right. And he had a little gun. And he had a little. I used to have a crisp cosmic uh, shooter gun. Mm, shot cosmic baking powder. 
And, and he had a little he had a little guy that was with him for a while there, but they kind of lost him kinda somewhere. Lost him. Of course, Quake had a grandmother with him yeah, for a Quake while. Yeah, Quake had granny. Yeah. And he also had a, a girlfriend, kind of like Nell here. Yeah. And Quake, uh -huh. his, Quake himself went through a well. Quake started. Let me see. Now, Quisp was from the moon or some planet. Yeah, <laughs> the moon or some planet. The moon or some planet. His little cereal was shaped like flying saucers. Yes, his, his cereal was shaped like flying saucers. And Quake lived underground. He was a miner kind of guy. His and he would like a rock. His his cereal <laughs> looked like a rock. Exactly. He was a, he was a miner, kind of in a volcano or something. And um, nasty. he's a moon man. He's a miner. They're detectives. No, no. And they were they were, <laughs> they were always at odds with each other because they thought well they each one thought his cereal was better than the other one. And then he went through this whole big change thing where um, well Quake started off. He was this big muscular guy wearing a little miner's hat. Had a little cape on the back. Had like blue jeans on. And then he they when they. He fell into this machine because they were they were reworking his cereal to make it leaner and nicer and better. And he came out as a leaner, nicer, better Quake. He had on a, a safari hat and he was <laughs> he was shapelier and he was more he was like a, a shapelier muscle guy instead of just a big husky muscle guy. He was a he was a shapelier yeah. muscle guy. It was it was kind of funny. Anyway, that was that was back like in the sixties. So and they had good commercials. They had wonderful commercials. Yeah. And we, well, Captain Crunch, by right. golly, he he's still started going off. Strong. He's still going. Of course, now he's turned into an uh, Inspector Gadget for some reason. Stuff comes out of his head, and he's like a <laughs> robot now. <laughs> what is that? Well, they're they're trying to pick up on the things that are popular. I mean, I I I wouldn't like, be surprised uh, if I saw Captain Crunch. Jump around and let, pull out a ninja sword. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. And There's start no doing kicks and things. You Whoa. Know? <laughs> Against those, what are the, the soggies now that he's fighting against? Yeah, the soggies. Because they were, he's gone through a whole list of things. There was the, the crunch berry bees. Yes. There's the um, the peanut butter whatever thing. Um, and those were darn good. <laughs> <laughs> the, peanut crunch. the peanut butter crunch. I love those. <laughs> okay. I don't think they make them anymore. No, they don't. They do not make the peanut butter crunch anymore. Um, <laughs> it's too unhealthy, I guess. <laughs> well, now they make it with Nutrisweet. Yeah. It tastes eh, like crap. Right. <laughs> Just wouldn't be the same at all. And this is in no way to uh, detriment back in the, the uh, Back the in the early 80s, industry, I did find <laughs> Quisp on a shelf, and it didn't taste like Quisp anymore. It, went, it was sad. It broke my heart. <laughs> well, that was, that was like the... We should the, do a whole show. We should do a whole show on cereal. <laughs> I, I should. I, that, that would actually be interesting. Cereal anyway, heroes. Cereal heroes. Right heroes. Now. <laughs> a whole show out of... Um, well, breakfast foods. Yeah. So anyway, just, just, well, okay. we'll plan our shows not on the air. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, on, on with on with this Bullwinkle thing well, here. Well, you know yeah. about Bullwinkle, it's it's a. When I saw it as a little kid, it was like. Whoosh, oh yeah. Way Most over my head, and then when I'm older and I watched it. Ah, <laughs> it's funny. Oh yeah. <laughs> And there's lots of there's lots of adult jokes in it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's a lot of adult there's humor. Two different levels there. And it's like little kids watch it. Oh, that's funny. And you watch it as a girl. I'm going, oh, I didn't get that 20 uh -huh. years ago. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And so, well, let's see there. We're, we'll jump up here to the 60s. About in um, 64, another, Jay Ward introduced another show, another character, the Hoppity Hooper Show. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Hoppity Hooper was a frog. At my house, he was a toad. Okay, frog, Lived in the toad. garden. <laughs> oh. Let's see if you can kind of zoom in there. There he is. He's a, he's a frog. There's old Hoppity right there, and there's Fenimore. Well, Fenimore. Well, let's see here. Let's, let me get these characters together. <laughs> Waldo Wigglesworth there, and um, Waldo Wigglesworth. Uh, Fenimore the bear. Phil, Fillmore bear. Excuse me. And Commander McBrag. He was always going around. Went on to be an underdog too. Dun, 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 dun. You know? Well, see, that McBrag? was interesting because he. Um, the place was India. <laughs> <laughs> McBrag wound up on Underdog. Commander, I don't think I have time to listen to this. <laughs> are they still running Underdog? Well, oh yeah, yeah, they do run Underdog. Like really yeah. cool. Just, just, uh, it's. I think it's running right now on NBC, like at 11:30 in the morning. It, this is what happens every year on Saturday morning cartoons anymore. They bring out a whole bunch of whatever the big movie or whatever the big TV mm -hmm. show was. They flop instantaneously. They show them just long enough to to pay them off, and then every year around, oh say March or so. You see all the classics come back out every year because yeah. they know they make money, and yet they never want to start with them. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So what they should really yeah. just do is, is just make show a, the classics. A retroactive Saturday morning. Where yeah. they just go back and show Retro old. Retro Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. This Yo, is great. We're available to host it. <laughs> That's right. Retro Saturday. <laughs> 
That shit's hopping way back and go way, way back yeah. here to 1967. That's right. And you can watch old cartoons. Bullwinkle, you got uh, Underdog, you got Jetsons, you yeah. got, you know, some classic ones out there. Now let's get on here with this show. In 67, he came out with another show, another introduced some more characters, which were which have just gone on into cl into into comic um You can catch these. You oh, can yeah. catch these on like TBS or something. They're we in a mishmash now. George of Jungle. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, George of the Jungle show was just great. We have George <laughs> who lived in the the Mguigui. Yeah. In the Mguigui Valley of Africa. <laughs> He had a, bird. an elephant named Shep, who we thought Shep. was a dog. Right. And, and he uh, had the Tookie Tookie bird, who was uh, just kind of hung his around. Girl Ursula, wasn't her name yeah, Ursula? Yeah, Ursula. Well, Ursula, there were Bella and Ursula, Ursula. Bella who were Ursula. like twins. Right. <laughs> and an ape named Ape. An ape named Ape, yes. <laughs> and he had the Tookie Tookie bird, who was kind of sit around. It was his Ooh, telephone. Rang. Bring. <laughs> 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 And I think like like George of the Jungle had like one of the coolest theme songs. Yeah. George of the Jungle, Super Chicken. And Tom and Slick. Tom Slick had we like were the all there in a half hour. That's there probably together. his best uh, theme oh, yeah. songs that got put together. I think those were like the only theme songs. Everything else. Well, was just no, Underdog had a real yeah. good one. Well, Underdog isn't really his. Not really. No. How did McBride wind up on well, Underdog? That's what I'm wondering here. Because McBride has shown up on He must have bought underdog. the. They must have bought the. Uh, who, that's how who my kids TV know. Or what's the name of the company? Um, TTV. TTV Productions must have did Underdog. Must yeah. together. I'm assuming something like that. Something. Something happened because I know I've seen it all. Yeah, because I saw that. I saw that guy in the uh, in the other show, and I was like, that looks a lot like the the friend of Commander McBride. <laughs> yeah. <that's>, yeah. <laughs> so go the brags of McBride. He was a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the show now and bust him out. You lie. Liar. You lie. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> but um, George of the Jungle was just this great guy. And then there was Super Chicken, who was, well, what? Oh, let me see. Oh, Super Chicken. <laughs> I, let me let me find the whole thing here on Super Chicken. It was it was just a great show, golly. Okay. Super, Super Chicken, chicken. Here we Super are. Chicken. Fred. Henry Cabot Henhouse the Third. He was a scientist who discovered super sauce, the liquid that turns him into a crime fighter with superpowers whenever he drinks it. When he drinks a super sauce, he put the bag as for a lesson. He will bring them in alive and kicking. <laughs> there is one thing you should learn with. There is no one else to turn to. Oh, Call for super chicken. chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so he's super chicken and Fred. Fred yeah. was this lion, the and they flew yeah. around in the super coop, and they would just solve crimes. And it was just a great show. <laughs> and there was Tom Slick. I don't think I really have a picture of Tom Slick. But Tom he, um, Slick and the Thunderbolt Grease Slapper. Yeah, his Thunderbolt Grease Slapper with Granny and, um, oh, come on, it's not that bad. Granny and, and they had a girlfriend like Nell also. <laughs> and he would go around and he'd just be in different races and he always raced against. One is just one bad. guy he always but, raced but against. But it's like their vehicles changed. It was like if it was a water race. Yeah, he would like turn the Thunderbolt Grease broke. Slapper into a boat or yeah. they would a race plane. on the snow, he'd turn the Thunderbolt Grease Slapper into a snowmobile or just whatever yeah, they needed. Mm hmm. And Anytime he was like, they knew. racing against this bad guy, what cheated and always. Oh, oh yeah, well, there's. I mean, this was around the big racing era. Kind of the I mean, great, they, great race kind of idea, but yeah, the great, well, the um, the wacky races kind of thing. Here, you know, they just but much shorter and easier to watch. <laughs> because there were only two two main characters. There would be other characters, but there were only two main characters, so you didn't get lost. And in, Tom always won. Exactly. Well. <laughs> Well, <laughs> you didn't see Boinkle and uh, <laughs> and Rocky lose too often. Well, they always they always were on a cliffhanger though. Right. They always, they always, well, they, well, that's, that's true. The Rocky and Boinkle thing did pick up the serial idea from yeah. um, the uh, well, he was uh, <laughs> from the, cereal. the announcer was William William Conrad, wasn't it? Was it? Oh, yeah, William here. Conrad, I believe, was the uh, announcer for that, and it was always the the uh, the serious title for the next episode and the and the and pun the, episode. Or, yeah, or. <laughs> Well, our friends. Probably, I think we got a great saved. appreciation of puns from that show. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> you know, when you're a little kid, you're too really, you're too little to really understand well, what that. Next week will it be frostbite falls or upset daisy or yeah, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. William Conrad did that. Huh? Oh, oh yeah. Oh cannonball. That's yeah. Oh cannon. Yeah. <laughs> Jake and the fat man. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the grumpy detective. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, well. Wow. Well, they've got a picture of Bullwinkle the, the I don't know balloon. if you can see this real <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a backside it's, it's of the Bullwinkle Balloon. It's the backside of a wonderful, <laughs> <laughs> a wonderful thing. The Bullwinkle Balloon in the Macy's Parade. I'm going to say they got to take that picture. <laughs> what a lovely picture it's like, that take is. Take that picture. Take your picture. What picture? Oh, oh, okay. I got him. I got him. I got him. No problem. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, man. There's a giant moose on the street. I thought I was having a hallucination. <laughs> yeah. oh. We feel it's adult humor, but NBC can't understand the joke, so they think it's a children's show. Yeah. <laughs> That's a quote from Jay Ward. When you consider the fact that, no, was was Rocking Boy ever on prime time? Or I think it was at some point. Um, well, now let's see. I'm it started fairly off sure it was. There, um... Well, if it was, it was on past our bedtime. Uh, well, no, <laughs> I don't no. really say. I'm pretty sure it was, and then they took it off, and it's like, you know, it's like, the, well, unlike the Flintstones, which is really, you know, it was an attempt for adult humor that really didn't go past kid humor, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, they just kind of... Which was also on on prime time, and really didn't deserve to be, but this show did. But they both went to the same fate of Saturday morning. I don't yeah. know. You know, I bet if our parents had watched it back well, then... Well, by golly, it did start off at prime time, you're right. Yeah, but I you know, so. You yeah. know, I bet if our parents had watched it then, though, it wouldn't have lasted, because it probably would have been considered controversial. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and would it would have been canned, right and there. we wouldn't have got to watch that's it. That's true. <laughs> and all that, you know. It used to be on it from 7 to 7.30 on Sunday nights in D.C. I mean, DC. now it's very mild, but back then it probably would have been controversial. Oh, everything was controversial back then. <laughs> you couldn't walk down the street without controversy back then. <laughs> I remember <laughs> one thing about the Fractured Fairy Tales. I remember one, they always would do a, a different take yes. on, on, the, on the favorite uh, fairy tales. And the one was uh, where they did Jack and the Beanstalk, and Jack with a ba was a baseball player. And what he'd do is he was in the outfield, and he uh, became this really famous because what he'd do is he'd, he'd see a fly ball and he'd dig a, he'd dig a hole really fast, throw the bean in, and the bean sack would go up and he'd be able to catch the ball in the air. <laughs> <laughs> and then this big guy comes up at the end and it's like, he's going to just hit it really high. So, the, so Jack panics and throws like 20 beans, you know, <laughs> into this thing and, and just goes nuts and fly and, and, the, uh, and the guy like bunts it into his area. By this point, he's like 100 feet up and he's unable to get at it. <laughs> did, did, did Bullwinkle ever pull a rabbit out of his hat? <laughs> no, nope, he, for sure. He tried it. He pulled a, he pulled a lion, lion out of that hat. He pulled a tiger out of that hat. He yeah. pulled a rhino out of that yeah. hat. Was never a rabbit. And he pulled Rocky out. He pulled Rocky out, out. yeah. <laughs> now is something we hope you'll Thank really you, like. <laughs> Three. <laughs> <laughs> So what else we got? Well, let's see. Okay, they're um, zipping through here. I think that's that's almost all that he really had. And of course, now you can see, like we mentioned earlier, the the uh, the classic bullwinkles. Yeah, you really can. are now available pretty much any place on the planet <laughs> <laughs> at your local gas station on video. It seems like, yeah. and uh, the first six volumes. Which uh, and and again and another another Flintstones uh, parallel. They've gone ahead and said, "Hey, this Bullwinkle thing's selling like hotcakes." So now they're putting out for the 30th anniversary of the Flintstones classic Flintstones, <laughs> which I think is far too available, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it was really neat a few years ago at this theater that's not a theater anymore because it's like a health club for the brats on campus. Mm-hmm. And remember, we took the kids and we went to see the J. Ward Tribute. J. Ward Festival. And it really was weird because, like, a lot of it's in black and white. Right. And my kids are watching it, and they don't have the concept of black and white TV. And they felt incredibly sorry for me and Wilbert because it's like... You wanted to watch it in black and white. You wanted to watch it in black and white. Where's the color? That's so color sad. Team. Captain Crunch isn't black and white. He's red and blue. And, and oh, Ma! <laughs> you were deprived. We, we were, were all deprived. We're so deprived. It's terribly deprived. <laughs> Such terribly deprived childhoods. They could hardly watch it because it was in black and white. And you know, it's, that's funny. I found that children born after um, after the middle 60s, like 68, 69, 70. When everybody went and got a color when, TV. When color TV was <laughs> just the norm, they, have, they just have no concept really of black and white, which is just really funny to me. It's like... Ted Turner is their patron saint. He's made everything <laughs> in color. Now we can watch it. What, <laughs> what I consider interesting, we mentioned that about Ted Turner, they're colorizing TV shows right now. And they have not picked Steve Allen, or they've not picked uh, Texaco Star Theater, or Playhouse 90. They've picked McHale's Navy and Gilligan's Island. <laughs> 
Well, they're starting. To, they're <laughs> Thank starting goodness small. they picked the absolute top of the heap. You know, the the pinnacle of television. Our when our when our civilization is dust, there'll still be colorized episodes of Mikhail's Navy. <laughs> And you know that that, that colorization, by golly, I'll bet there's some radioactivity in there. Yeah. <laughs> They'll still be seeing those from now on. It's like it's going to be imprinted on TV screens. Gilligan. <laughs> McHale. <laughs> You'll turn off your TV. It'll still be there. That's so. right. Well, I won't be around. I guess it's time for us to kind of wrap it. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, well, uh, for our next episode, very exciting. We're very excited about this. It's We're so excited. Here we are. <laughs> NBC, the Silverman years, the, uh, the late 70s, you'll see such hits as Super Train. <laughs> Marvelous, fantastic shows. Wonderful shows. Wonderful use of videotape. That's right. So, again, want to tell you, Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV Cable 21. And now I think it's time to go to the credits. And oh. here they are, our highly technical credits.